In a campaign some claim has been bereft of excitement, this stone tablet engraved with Labour manifesto pledges has enlivened proceedings. Our six pledges form the basis of our plan for working people. These he even promised to plant it in the number 10 garden. But his limestone monolithic tribute to sincerity led critics to swiftly accuse Ed Miliband of hubris on a biblical scale, inspiring online memes of him as Moses and carved into Mount Rushmore. But the Labour leader said it ensured his party could not be allowed to forget its promises, taking aim at the Lib Dems' U-turn on tuition fees in Worcester today. I'm not going to break my word, as Nick Clegg did. If I had done what he did five years ago, I don't think I could ask for your trust again. I will cut tuition fees from £9,000 to £6,000. And I tell you this, if I fail in this task, I won't be standing here again in 2020 making more promises. In London, Nick Clegg didn't set anything in stone on Europe, instead highlighting public sector pay as his final ultimatum for any coalition, insisting it must rise in line with inflation for the next two years. We are the party which will give hope to the millions of public sector workers, the social workers, the nurses, the teachers, who've had to endure year after year of pay cuts but now no longer should. Nick Clegg says public sector pay would be a red line in post-election negotiations. He has already said his opposition to an EU referendum as proposed by UKIP and the Conservatives would not. I so happen to believe that the priorities of the Liberal Democrats of finishing the job and doing it fairly and investing in public services is actually much more in line with a lot of you know, mainstream British public opinion than the, than the single issue preoccupations of other, other political parties. But can you let voters know that you won't do a deal with the Tories on Europe? Look, no polit politician, much as you will ask me over and over again, can predict to you what mandate they're going to receive from the British people. And until we have got our marching instructions from the British people, through the votes that they, um, that they cast on Thursday, of course no politician can answer all these endless what-if questions. After recently forgetting which football team he supports, David Cameron was greeting another one in the Midlands, warning voters about backing UKIP or the Lib Dems. Now, you cannot vote UKIP and have me remain as your Prime Minister. They are the back door to a Labour government. I've heard what you've said, and we have a plan to deal with immigration, and an EU referendum that will give you your chance to have your say on Europe. And if you're considering voting Lib Dem and think that will result in me being your Prime Minister, that won't work either. Despite polls staying stubbornly close, Nigel Farage tried to shift talk away from doing deals. The whole debate today, everywhere, is about who is going to jump into bed with who next Friday morning. And exciting though that may be, could we please start talking about policy? That's what the voters are supposed to be going to the polls next Thursday to make decisions on. Despite a bold monument of promises, with days to go, the forecast is far from definite.